because they want to make a fair competition that every contestant uh, got a matryoshka upon re registration. So even though the Russians know this from, for many years, all the teams have, have had several days to prepare and get familiar with them. So the thing with these dolls is inside this doll is another doll, which in turn can, can be opened. Uh, and, and the plot here in the problem is that uh, you're the owner of several uh, such dolls. Uh, each doll contains one or more other, or may contain uh, other dolls. The size of the smallest uh, doll is always one, and then they go up to two, three, four, and up, up to uh, uh, a number. That's not in my head, but it says so in the problem statement anyway. Uh, all these uh, doll pieces are lined up on, on the table, uh, and for, for some reason, uh, you want to put them together again using a minimal number of doll openings because that's considered taking time and, and that of course uh, is costly. So if you want to combine these two, uh, if we can please see them in the, uh, in, in the okay. <laughs> uh, I'll lift them up if, if the cameras don't. So in order to combine these two, of course I need to open one doll to put this other in, inside. But if, if it turns out that I have an additional doll, which happens to be in my pocket, I, of course, need to open two dolls in order to put this inside. And, well, of course, I should put the... Well, you get it. I, I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is it. But Shoishka dolls aren't that hard. But no. uh, I have to say that it is not a very spread uh, toy for Russian <laughs> babies, for Russian children. It's just an uh, old Russian toy. M maybe it's just for, for tourists it's just in for Russia. Tourists. For tourists, yes. Right. It's a symbol of Russia, you know, Matryoshka. So, so just a comment. Uh, in, in the problem, we actually could have 500 dolls. Yeah. <laughs> so if you come here and buy 500 dolls, uh, then that's probably quite expensive. I yes. Also. Also. So the so point is, uh, a smaller doll can only be put inside a, a big one. So that, that's a, a constraint we have. And you're also only allowed to combine dolls that are next, next to each other, which means that I'm allowed to put this one into that one, but I'm not allowed to combine those two directly. I always have to combine them one by one. Uh, the, uh, this is uh, the kind of problem we usually call it sol solvable by dynamic programming. Uh, so you basically create a big matrix, uh, typically containing the cost of combining all the dolls from one position to another position. And of course, uh, if, if it's only one doll, uh, it doesn't need combining. So that's, that is, of course, free. So that costs nothing. That's what, what I mean, mean here. Uh, and of course, combining these two, this cost of one. Com combining, if I chose to combine those two, that, that would be or these two, that will also be one. But if I uh, decide to combine these two groups, of course I need to open open number four, number three, size two, in order, so that's three opening. Openings needed, and here, well, 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 well so, and, uh, and of course, the, it's three, three openings needed in order to do this operations, but then you have four and five. Oh, operations needed in previous steps. And of course, these two can be combined in one step and, and these steps. So the total cost is seven. And this is also the example that was shown in the problem statement. Uh, so dynamic programming, I'd say all teams reaching the world finals know dynamic programming. There's no way you can even get here without knowing it. So I won't go deeper further into that. Uh, there are some special cases, of course. Uh, there's some ambiguity in, in which dolls uh, should be combined together. Uh, in this case, where you have uh, one, three, two, one, uh, in, in theory, uh, these three could be combined together and form one valid doll, or these three could be combined together. And, and then it turns out that it's uh, less expensive to put this inside that one inside that one than doing it in the opposite way of direction. So there's actually another step of, of, rec of dynamic programming that needs to be done there. Uh, I'd say... <laughs> If, if you just find these special cases, it's probably straight, uh, straightforward, but, but yes. not all teams get this right at the first time. But it was the Russian team that <laughs> got this right first. Uh, but right. the other ones have had time to prepare for two days. So I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's reasonably fair. 
Well, no, isn't this problem H? Yeah, H. They was solved first by uh, National University of Singapore. Okay. So that proves that it was fair. Okay. That's really Conclusively. Conclusive. <laughs> yeah. Good to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Dane. Thank uh, you. And this is a fairly easy problem, right? That's that's what we were thinking. I mean, it's it's not it's not the problem we expect to be solved like immediately. It's, right. It's not not the the problem you should run for, identify and, and go oh, for. Is it because it's double, a double. Um, Dynamic programming. Yeah, two but, layer cake. But, uh, yeah, so so it's it's a problem we would expect most teams to have a chance of solving. That doesn't mean that they identify it and and actually do it and get it solved. But they they should definitely be capable of, of solving it unless they spend their time doing something else. Mm.